Have you heard the joke about the time a baseball card, a pack of chewing gum, and a piece of sports apparel walked into a retail store? Haven't heard that one? It's okay. There probably isn't a joke in the entire catalog of jokes within our entire history that does combine those things. All those consumer product categories do have a commonality though, and that's because it was just announced in early January that Fanatics would acquire the trading card giant Tops for $500 million. You might be asking, that's great, Josh, but what the heck does that have to do with the CPG industry-focused content you normally put out and why we follow you? Well, it's a CPG division of tops that was left out of this M&A deal that has me wondering kind of what's next. Before I dive right into that focal point like I usually do, I what to kind of ask if you would give me a little leeway to nerd out on a few kind of dang that super interesting stories that I think you'll enjoy about Fanatics and Tops first. The super interesting story number one is about the CEO of Fanatics, Michael Rubin, and his insane ability to turn unwanted business assets into massive value. So in 1998, Rubin created the apparel and logistics company Global Sports Incorporated, which would later turn into GSI Commerce. 13 years later, Rubin sold GSI Commerce to eBay for $2.4 billion. But here's the thing, eBay only wanted the order fulfillment business for large retailers so it could better compete with Amazon. So Rubin was able to buy back those consumer businesses of GSI at a fire sale price, which included Fanatics, Rulala, and ShopRunner. In a little more than a decade's time, Ruben has achieved the unthinkable with these businesses. So Rulala has acquired additional assets, now known as Ru Gilt Group, and is looking to IPO soon. In December 2020, ShopRunner was acquired by FedEx for an undisclosed amount, but probably a lot of money. And then Fanatics has raised multiple rounds of equity and is now valued at $18 billion dollars likely more now because of the TOPS acquisition. That has made Michael Rubin a very wealthy man that now has a network that's approaching $10 billion. Now the second super interesting story relates to a previous piece of content I did last year that discussed some of the greatest CPG brand pivots of all time. If you haven't checked that one out, I'll kind of make it easy for you and I'll pop it up right here for you. I'll also leave the link to that content in this content's description. But in that content, I left out one amazing CPG brand pivot, and that's the Tops Company. Many likely don't realize that though the Tops Company was founded in 1938, it could trace its roots back to an earlier firm, American Leaf Tobacco, which was founded in 1890. So American Leaf Tobacco encountered difficulties during World War I and later as a result of the Great Depression. So the company's leadership decided to focus on a new product that would kind of take advantage of the company's existing distribution channels. To do this, they relaunched the company as Tops with a name that meant to indicate that it would be Tops in its field. The chosen field was to manufacture chewing gum. And at the time, chewing gum was still relatively a novelty that was sold in individual pieces. The most successful early Topps product was Bazooka Bubblegum, which was packaged with a small comic on its wrapper. But starting in 1950, the company decided to try increasing gum sales by packaging them together with trading cards featuring Western character Hopalong Cassidy. Next, Topps introduced baseball cards as a product, and the rest is history. While I was a huge trading card collector as a kid, I want to focus on the bazooka, bubblegum, and the previously known as confections and gift cards divisions of Topps. So Michael Rubin didn't want these candy and confections divisions. It really doesn't fit into the Fanatics business, which kind of begs the question, can the current owners of Bazooka Candy Brands channel the 2011 era Michael Rubin and kind of turn these unwanted assets into a multi-billion dollar company? 
So who are today's owners of the Bazooka Candy brands? It's private equity firms, Tornanti Company, and Madison Dearborn Partners. What are those kind of unwanted assets that they were able to keep? The first one is that confections and candy division. This segment did about $225 million in revenue in 2021, which was up about 13.5% year-over-year on a growth rate. It includes iconic heritage brands like Ring Pop, Bazooka Gum, Bottle Pop, and Push Pop. These are leading front-of-store non-chocolate candy brands that have been around for many decades and have a mature, established retail footprint. The second segment that they got was gift cards. And this is about like one-tenth the size of the candy and confections segment, but the growth rate is a kind of a tad bit higher. And it focuses on the global gifting market and provides payment solutions for leading consumer-centric companies like Nike, Instacart, Airbnb, and many more. And then finally, they have kind of a kicker or kind of icing on the cake here is that they have licensing uh, still within certain IP that was included into the Topps company originally. So in addition to the continued ownership of the Bazooka candy brands, they will have the rights to produce movies and television shows of certain Topps properties such as the Garbage Pail Kids. So who's running this company now? The company will continue with Michael Brandstetter as the CEO. He was running the company when it was a complete holistic company. He's going to kind of run it now when it is just the segments that I talked about earlier. And they're in capable hands because he has a very strong CPG background with 12 years at Kraft Foods Nabisco divisions that were eventually sold off to Mondelez International. It's that experience combined with the current strategic game plan that they kind of already have in place that I will allow to kind of guide me as to maybe what options could be in the market for Bazooka Candy Brands to grow into a multi-billion dollar company. So the first one is around emotional connection. Now, every decision they've ever made at the Tops Company and now at the Bazooka Candy Companies will be focused on staying true to the iconic history and relevance to consumers. And that includes decisions around like new product development, innovation, and mergers and acquisitions. So secondly, they need to think about diversifying their product portfolio. Being that the company is strong in the front of store non-chocolate area, it really should be thinking firstly about how to expand those current brands into the back of store. Next, I would be pushing harder towards like seasonal or holiday offerings that dominate the candy buying behavior with consumers. And then I would also be looking to create new brands or products that can diversify the product portfolio and also increase the exposure into health and wellness. Now, I don't think all indulgences need to be like better for you, but with the shift towards sensible indulgences with consumers, I think you do need extra exposure to kind of better for you or popular health forward adjacencies. And then finally, I would be looking to make some moves in the mergers and acquisitions market. A few names that could be interesting would be Impact Confections that owns the Warheads brand, Unreal Brands, and then Project 7, both of those kind of being better for you brands. And then thirdly, I would be looking at strategic licensing partnerships. As mentioned earlier, they would likely have opportunities to utilize licenses for entertainment and digital asset purchases. Talk about digital assets like NFTs, especially with the Garbage Pail Kids. But I also think they will stay active in looking for different uses to the IP that they own. A good example is with the introduction to the kind of health and wellness market through the strategic licensing partnership they have with Rise Supplements that will be using Bazooka, the bubblegum brand, and then Ring Pop for energy drinks and powdered supplements. Fourth, I'd be looking at international expansion. Bazooka candy brands are currently strong in the US, Canada, some of Europe, maybe Saudi Arabia, but I believe there's significant expansion opportunities in Russia, Eastern Europe, India, and then part of the Asian Pacific region. They could improve their chances of success by focusing on a globalization strategy, a kind of spirit animal candy brand that they could look at that is great at globalization would be Kit Kat. And then finally, I would be trying to ramp up the digital transformation of the company. Now, historically, digital and the impulse kind of front of store hasn't meshed very well, but that's starting to change because there is that emergence of the instant needs fulfillment like GoPuff. 
The previously mentioned kind of adjustment towards the back of store, like pack architecture, would also help the viability of online because they would have kind of better fitting merchandise for things like Amazon. So I just kind of want to end on some final thoughts. If all else fails, the company is likely to be an attractive mergers and acquisition asset for current candy or confectionery market leaders. A final thought could also see the company merge with a similarly sized candy portfolio like Tootsie Roll Industries. Who knows, but it's kind of a tasty proposition to think about, right? I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that slightly less than 70% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But just want to thank you again for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.